Hello and welcome to Kitchen Inspirations. My name is Carmelo and I do want to thank you for joining us here at our you know, Sojirushi America Corporation headquarters down in Torrance, California. With that said, today is a special day or I should say this week because this weekend gets even more special. Of course, we are celebrating you know, one of my favorite beverages and I'm sure it's one of your favorite beverages and if not, someone you love and know it is their favorite beverage. Of course, I am talking none other than coffee. So, why are we talking about coffee today? Well, September 29th and October 1st is actually a day that many countries around the world celebrate coffee. And how are we celebrating this? You know, grand day, of course, we are celebrating it with a campaign. You either buy one of these two coffee makers and you will get a free tumbler. So, Going now all the way until October 1st, buy one of these two, get a free tumbler. If you want to know what tumbler it is, I'll give you a little hint. Okay. With that said, uh, you know, thank you for joining us. It is a Tuesday. So if you are watching, do let us know what are you doing today? What are your plans for today? And uh, definitely thank you for joining us. Alrighty. So with that said, um, I do want to start off with, you know, some of these countries that celebrate National Coffee Day. So September 29th, countries like Austria, Belgium, Canada, Ethiopia, Hungary, Iceland, India, Norway, the Philippines, Romania, South Africa, Sweden, Thailand, uh, Pakistan, Karachi, Poland, and of course, if you're here down in the United States like we are, we are celebrating it on September 29th. Now. If you're from Australia, Honduras, Ireland, Slovakia, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, Mongolia, New Zealand, Singapore, Sri Lanka, the UK, or Bangladesh, then you might be celebrating it on October 1st. And do let us know down in the comments, will you be drinking a nice special cup of coffee on those days? If you are, let us know. And then of course, let us know, you know, which country you're from. Are you from the US like us or somewhere else? Okay, so, you know, we're going to go straight to what we're doing today. A lot of coffee makers can make hot coffee, but, you know, not a lot of coffee makers, you know, can make iced coffee or, you know, they don't have the features built in them. Of course, you could just maneuver your way and do it yourself. But, you know, we do have specific courses on how to make iced coffee. And I want to show you how to make that using our EC YT Scene 100 coffee maker. This is our flagship. This is, you know, what we have been, you know, what's been on the market for a long time. And it is a really good coffee maker. And then we got the new kit on the block over here. We have the EC ESC 120. Now this one, it's been, uh, it was released earlier this year and it's really has, it has a lot of great features and it's also been doing really well. So with that said, uh, you know, do let us know down in the comments, which one do you prefer? Which one do you want me to, you know, start off with? Do you want me to go with, you know, the big one over here, our flagship, or do you want the new kid on the black over here, the smaller version? The first comment I see, I will go ahead and choose that one. With that said, uh, thank you over here. We are multi-streaming. In fact, we're streaming on uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and on uh, Twitch as well. So over here on on Facebook, we have Branda Sadler. You are from the U.S. Hey, very nice. Uh, oh, Branda, small. Okay, let's go with the small one as well. Branda, which part of the you know states are you from? We're over here in the Pacific, so we are in LA right now. Are is it currently 12 for you, or is it you know for you know three hours over there in New York? Do let us know. Okay, so Brenda, we will start with the small version right now. Okay, so just a little bit of details. This is the EC, ESC120. It was released earlier this year. And don't let it size fool you because it can actually do a lot of things. But before I do get into that, let's just make some hot uh, iced coffee. So with that said, we will need to get coffee beans. We always recommend you get coarse coffee, not fine coffee. Just a little tip from me to you. And then uh, let's go to our close-up camera over here so we can see how it's done. Okay, so now that we have the you know, ECSC 100 over here, one thing I do want to note is that for this um, coffee maker, you will need to go ahead and purchase yourself one of those uh, coffee filter papers that you easily see in the markets. You will need to get a size four, okay? There is a lot of different coffee 
fish with different sizes, we need a size four, okay? So now the size four, the first thing that you want to do is on the bottom side, you want to fold that towards you, right? So towards your belly, go ahead and just slide and fold that, okay? Actually, I have two. Let's remove one. Go ahead and fold it towards you. So once it's folded towards you, you want to get the side and fold it the opposite direction, okay? So once it's folded in the opposite direction, that is it. All you got to do is just open it and you are good to go, okay? You want to open the lid and then over here, there is a filter basket. So once you have the filter basket, just go ahead and put it in there, very easy, okay? Once it's in there, just go ahead and put it in the coffee maker. Okay, and then you would have to get your spoon and start putting in the coffee in the filter paper, okay? So this is the spoon that it comes with. It's kind of hard to tell, but this has a measurement of one spoon to up to two spoons. Now the one spoon is if you're trying to make a one cup of coffee, the two spoons is for when you're trying to make two cups of coffee, right? <clears throat> so right here down in the middle, there's a little a mark where it shows a, you know, one cup of coffee. I hope you can see that. And then if you're trying to do two cups of coffee, just make sure to fill it all the way to the top. Okay. So the, the smallest amount that you can make is six cups of iced coffee, right? I hope you can see that right there. And then it can go up to eight cups of iced coffee. Let's go ahead and do the smallest amount. Let's do six cups. That means that we're gonna have to fill this three times, okay? So, over here, we have two cups, and then we have four cups. And lastly, we have six cups, okay? And last tip I have over here for you, you always wanna make sure that the coffee beans are uh, evenly grounded, right? You want it to be flat. So I will shake that a little bit, make sure that it's fat, flat, excuse me. You don't want it to have kind of a, a mountain shape or you don't want it to have like a dent as well. This will allow the water to, to uh, you know, brew the coffee, but it won't evenly distribute it and it won't be a consistent brew each and every single time. So you always wanna make sure that it is flat, okay? Once it's set, go ahead and close it. And then over here, we would choose the iced coffee course. So over here you see that there's a brew, a one four cup, and iced coffee. That's the one we want. Go ahead and click it. You'll see that it starts blinking a orangey red. Once that is set, go ahead and then click the brew button. And you'll know that it is brewing because it has like a little, you know, square kind of shape just going back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> okay. One thing I did forget to mention is the taste tuner. Now this is what makes this so special is that there is a taste tuner over here. Now, uh, there is this panel where I could go to classic and if I go to classic, it'll give me a light brew. However, if I go to, um, to the bolt section, it, it will give me a more uh, thick and rich brew. So let me show you up close. So over here, there is classic and then there is bold, okay? For, for today, let's just go with, you know, kind of somewhere in between. Let's go with not neither classic nor bold, or both, you could say. Okay, so meanwhile we wait, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, talk about this coffee maker, the EC ESC 120 once again. Ah, so Brenda, okay. I see you are, it is 309 right now. So you are definitely in the East Coast, I believe. Thank you for joining us here, you know, 3 p.m. Um, you know, it, it is a weekday, so really, thank you. Now, Brenda, do tell me, uh, what kind of coffee do you like? Do you like, you know, a, a very uh, dark kind of coffee or do you like it more on the lighter side? Okay, so meanwhile we wait, I do want to talk about some of the features that this coffee maker has. So two of my favorite features that it has is the taste tuner. Once again, I talked about it. Um, so once, let me go ahead and show you quickly over here. 
Let's go to the close up. So it is a taste tuner, right? We have classic and then we have bold. If you like very, very kind of dark chocolate, very thick, then you can not go wrong with choosing the bold side. However, if you like a light um, kind of coffee brew, go ahead and click the classic. There is no right or wrong. You can go anywhere in between. Let's say you go right down the middle. That's how I'm brewing our coffee right now. Uh, let's say if I want to go somewhere around the bold side, but not too much, we could go ahead and do that. Or I could go, you know, like 70%, you know, towards the bold side, or even, you know, on the opposite side, there is no right or wrong, which is, you know, a very, very cool feature that I personally really like about this coffee maker, which means, you know, you could kind of play around with it. Let's say on Monday, you go with classic on Tuesday, you go somewhere in between on Wednesday, you go down the middle on Thursday, you go, you know, closer to the bolder side on Friday, you go to the bold. And then on Saturday, you could do an iced coffee. You know, there is a lot of, you know, ways you can have uh, fun with this. Oh, damn. Okay. And that beeping is not a good beep. That means something went wrong, which I forgot to mention over here. Uh, I need to put the six cups of iced coffee needs to go in the water. Of course, without water, no way of making coffee. This is, uh, you know, previously I thought that I put it, but I forgot to mention it is in the glass carafe. That's how we know we have six cups of coffee. Go ahead and put that in there. Whoops. Now that it's in there, we could then redo it again, right? So round two, let's go ahead. So once again, let's go, uh, let's go down the middle. That's, that's what I like personally. Um, again, go with iced coffee, go with brew. Okay. So once again, just so you know, you know, if you make a mistake like I did, then it will not make coffee and you'll know that with the sound. So, uh, now you know that we do have safety features there that won't allow the coffee maker to just kind of heat the glass and then, you know, shatter it because it's too hot. No, we have safety features locked in there. Again, that was an example. And uh, yeah, so again, it's gonna take about six to eight minutes for it to brew the coffee. Now let's go back um, and talk about the EC ESC 120. Once again, Brenda, dark. Yes, uh, dark coffee is nice. But you know what? I tend to do a lot of light recently. I think this, this year I've been just light and milk you know, a little bit of sugar, not too much. Um, yeah. So with that said, uh, I do have a question for you, Brenda, then. Uh, let's see. Let's see if you know this. No Google, right? Don't search. Let's see if you, you actually know this. What is the world's largest coffee producer? Now, I actually knew this one before I searched it. So let's see if you do too. Okay. Going back to the ECESC 120, let's talk about the the coffee uh, taste tuner, again, no no uh, ways, there is no wrong, no right, everything, you can just go ahead and you know play with it, every time will be a different experience, which is, which is why I really like this coffee maker. The second feature that, you know, it kind of, you know, stands this coffee maker from other coffee makers is this thing on the top, right? You might be thinking, what is this dome-like feature? And if I put it at an angle, you can see that it is like a dome. It, it's not flat. It's kind of a, you know, circular shape. Now this is what we call the shower dome. Essentially what happens is that there is this hose right here. And this hose is where it shoots water up to the top of the shower dome. And you know what they say, what goes up must come down. So then after the water will get, you know, set down. And it will always evenly distribute the water down to the coffee, which is down over here, right? And it would always give you that consistent brew every time, making coffee delicious every single time you do this. It's a little difficult to explain. So let's go ahead and check this video on the screen. So did you see that? So you saw the like the hose kind of spraying water up. That's actually what's doing right now. I could actually see 
the, you know, the water spraying up to the shower dome. And it does this repeatedly, repeatedly, and you know, when it does that, it evenly distributes the water and making, you know, a very consistent cup of coffee. Okay, so Brenda, you said Colombia is the world's largest coffee producer. And I think that is number two, if I remember correctly. Not number one, but very close. Uh, number one is in fact Brazil, okay? So Brazil, I, what was it? I think 70%, like 60 to 70% of all of the coffee in the world is produced in Brazil. So now we know, we know kind of why it's you know, one of the, the world's leading economies or it's getting up there, right? A lot of coffee, but okay. Yes, so once again, the shower dome helps disperse water evenly to the shower head for uniform saturation of grounds and a consistent brew, okay? Alrighty, so we have the taste tuner, we have the shower dome. What else do we have with this coffee maker? Well, let's go ahead and look in the close camera once again. We have the regular brew course, if you just want a regular cup of coffee, go ahead and just press the brew. It'll automatically, you know, brew the, the cup of coffee. If you're using this course, we recommend anywhere between four to 12 cups of hot coffee. Um, if you want, you know, not a lot of, of coffee, you just want one cup or let's say two cups or maybe even, you know, three to four, you could use the, the this one to four cup course. Again, right now we're using the iced coffee course. There is a cleaning course over here, which I'll talk about. And last but not least, the brew timer. Now the brew timer allows you to, you know, just set the time uh, you want your coffee to brew. So let's say you wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning, which is really early and you're like, I want my coffee at 3.55 in the morning. You can do that, right? Or, you know, the opposite. If you want it to be done at 8 p.m. when you get home, you could go ahead and do that yourself. Uh, the cleaning course. The cleaning course is really neat because, of course, when you have this coffee, uh, you know, it, it uh, the water will pour up the water hose into the shower dome. And depending how clean your water is or not, you know, especially if you're using tap water, there might be a lot of, you know, uh, uh, I believe it's like calcium when it when it gets hot, it starts like uh, getting hard. And that's why a lot of, uh, you know, if you if you've ever used a electric kettle and you have water and you use it over and over again you'll see a lot of like white things on the bottom that is what essentially can happen to this depending on how clean your water is and if it gets too hard it might you know be difficult for the water to continue you know brewing at a consistent uh brew and then also how fast it brews so it might slow down if that ever does happen we recommend that you use a citric acid cleaner which can also be bought at our shop online and then you would just use that cleaning feature and boom, you are good to go, right? It'll then, you know, work like it's brand new. Okay, so again, we have the regular brew, the one of four cups, of course, we have the iced coffee course, which we are doing right now. We have the cleaning feature and then we do have the timer. Alrighty, so next question, while we do wait for this coffee, and how do we know if this coffee is finished? Well, you will hear a sound which we have not heard yet, meaning that it's still doing its thing. It's still, uh, you know, making coffee. So this next question about coffee, which I didn't know. If you do know, let me know down in the comments because this is one of those things that you really do got to look up in my opinion. Okay, so what is the most expensive coffee in the world? Oh, there goes the sound. We'll go right now. So what is the most expensive coffee in the world? If you do know, let me know down in the comments. No Googling before that. Oh, you know, actually, yeah, go ahead and just search it online right now. It's actually quite interesting uh, what it is. Okay, going back to the close camera over here, the close up. The coffee, we heard the sound, it means it's finished. Now, what do we do? Well, for this one, uh, you can see that the coffee actually already went down into the glass carafe. It's, it's set, it's good to go. You can see that, uh, you know, in the, the iced coffee, it's about the sixth cup of coffee. And you'll notice that in the hot, it's actually on the same level than it is for the, the ice. Like the, the four cups of hot coffee and six cups of iced coffee is the same level. Now, why is that? 
Well, the reason we have this is for if you're making hot coffee, right? You would just drink it right off the bat. However, for, for iced coffee, you're not finished yet. You need the main ingredient, which is ice, right? Now, what is ice? Ice is water. So when you put this concentrated amount into the iced coffee, it'll melt down the ice, allowing for a very consistent, and very delicious iced cup of coffee. Now, let's say you made a hot coffee and you would use this and then you would put, a, additionally, you would put ice, it would taste like watered down coffee. Now that is the difference between hot coffee and then the iced coffee course, okay? So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get a cup of coffee, okay? Let's go over here. So we have, let's put it right here. The glass, you would get whatever uh, cup you want, whether it's a you know glass cup, whether it's a uh, tumbler over here, whether it's uh, you know a, a cup of coffee, just go ahead and put your ice on there. That is what we recommend. Um, just go ahead and fill it up until you know until you like. The more ice, the colder it is, right? Usually, what I like to do, and I like to fill it all the way to the top. Okay. Okay, there we go. All the way to the top. Let's go ahead and put this. I'll be drinking this later on. Okay, so we have ice in our cup. What do we do next? Of course, we go ahead and just press, pour the coffee onto the glass. And actually something that I do wanna note is that the spout over here for this carafe, let me go to the close up over here. You can see that there is this uh, like very unique nose shape. Now this will allow for the carafe when you're pouring it, it won't actually spill hot coffee. A lot of times when you use these, and if it doesn't have this very nice design, when you put it back up, it'll start dripping down right here. Not, not with this carafe, I mean, look at it once again, you can see that it has no water whatsoever right here. So that's a nice feature that I really do like with this uh, coffee maker. Um, okay, now that we have it, we always wanna go ahead and you know, mix it. Make sure that it is ice. Looks pretty good, right? Let's see, let's go over here. There we go. We got our iced coffee ready for on a Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Okay. So that is how we make iced coffee for the EC ESC 120. Once again, if you buy this coffee maker right now, you will get a free Tumblr. Okay. All righty. So going back to the question, we talked about what is the most expensive coffee in the world? Now this one, I did not know. It is in fact the Kopi Luwak, I believe. K-O-P-I-L-U-W-A-K. Now this, uh, the reason this coffee is so uh, expensive is because you don't really find it out there in the wild. Well, I guess you could find it out there in the wild, but it is really hard to find in the wild. So a lot of people sometimes find it, farm it. I'm not gonna go into the details because you know there's reasons why it's, some people wanna drink it or some people don't wanna drink it. But essentially, what I, the, the answer I found online is that this coffee is made from coffee beans that have been eaten and excreted by this animal called the Asian palm civet or civets. So, you know what that means. Yeah, so would he drink that coffee or would he not drink it? Apparently it, it goes anywhere between $100 for a farm up to like $1,000 or something for like, you know, it's just really expensive. So if you would drink it, you know, you can keep it yourself, but it is a very, very uh, unique cup of coffee. Okay, moving on, we do have the EC YTC 100 over here. Now, 
This one is made a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and just start making the cup of uh, coffee using the, the coffee maker over here up in the close up cam. You can see that I already have my water in the water tank once again. So this one, if you forget earlier, like I did, you know, if you don't pour it into the water tank over here, no worries, you will know because the water is already over here. And of course, similarly, there are uh, safety features. So if you don't actually have water, it will tell you, alert it, you by, you know, having beeps. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you open the switch here. So you can just e easily open it. And then there is a uh, filter basket. Now the filter basket is this black uh, part over here. And inside is a permanent mesh stainless uh, coffee filter. Now this you could reuse over and over and over again. So it's really neat. No need to buy those, um, let me get it, coffee paper filters from the markets. It already has one over here. And uh, you know, just go ahead and wash it every time after use. Um, go ahead and place it in there perfectly. And I do want to note that the, the spoon for this one is a little bit different. So for the previous one, we did have this spoon. Uh, this spoon over here, the two-sided spoon, is the YTC version. For two cups of coffee, you can see it right here. One cup, two cups, you would use this version. If you're only trying to make one cup of coffee, over here you would use a shorter version. Since the minimum you could do for iced coffee is four cups of coffee, let's go ahead and put two spoons onto the uh, filter basket. So first, fill it up to the top. Once we know it's ready, go ahead and put one and then put two. Okay. Once it's ready, you could go ahead and close it and that's it. The next thing you want to go ahead and do is click uh, start and it'll start brewing it very easily. Okay. One thing I do want to note is that there is a time saver mode which I think, I believe you can see it right here. If you did want to save, let's say a minute to two, depending on how many cups of coffee you're putting, you could go ahead and push the time saver button and then put the start button. Now, uh, again, this does save like a minute or two. So if you're in a rush, it's really helpful. Um, but if not, I would just recommend to push the start button. Okay, another feature that it does have is that it has a timer over here, similar to our other coffee maker so you can choose and uh, you know have your coffee made at a specific time any time of the day you know anywhere between 5 in the morning to 5 p.m. at night you know 24 hour clock we have it right there if you did want to cancel for whatever reason we do have the cancel button and you know very simple there we go we have uh, the coffee maker we have three cups all the way up to 10 cups max and then this is for hot coffee for iced coffee we have four cups to five cups of iced coffee now you can see that the coffee maker is actually brewing it if i stay quiet for a little bit you can see that it is actually going down so i hope you can hear that um the coffee is actually going down into the carafe right here so this is actually where this coffee maker shines. This is a little bit different from this craft. Now, can you tell me what is the main difference between these two? I think it's pretty obvious. It's the material that it's made, right? This one is glass and this one is stainless steel, but not just any regular stainless steel. Now, if you're familiar with our products, so Jerushi, we have been making a double wall vacuum insulated products for a very long time. In fact, that was the inception of our company. It started off making vacuum uh, bottles and then it went on to making other things such as rice cookers and bread makers, which we're really known for over here in the United States. But again, we do have, uh, you know, tumblers, mugs that do use this technology. Once again, that means that if you put hot coffee in this tumbler, it will stay hot for a long time. Likewise, if you put hot coffee in this carafe, it will retain that temperature for a long time. So let's say, for example, you're making a coffee at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, hours later, let's say it's noon, it's lunchtime, you wanna get your second cup of coffee, it will still be near to where it originally started at five in the morning. Again, it's just, that's how amazing this technology is. Uh, double wall vacuum insulated technology. 
but I think the main part about this is also that um, it because it is double wall vacuum insulated you know like other coffee makers for example they have a heating element now the heating element for example for a lot of coffee makers that have um, you know glass crabs it's on the bottom now the bottom it will have the heating uh, plate and then that will kind of go up to the, the coffee, the water where it would kind of boil the coffee. And sometimes you can overdo it and then you, when you drink the coffee, it tastes like burnt coffee. Not with this. Why is that? Well, because the, the coffee that is being, uh, you know, brewed down to the, to the craft is already hot. And then what it, the craft does, it just retains that temperature. Okay, so the every like your first cup to your second to your fourth cup of coffee will always taste very fresh, very consistent and very good. Okay, so very, very, uh, you know, this is definitely one of those things where this uh, coffee maker shines. And a little tip if you do decide to make hot coffee is that, you know, kind of uh, preheat this uh, carafe. Simply all you got to do is remove remove the top the lid go ahead and just put hot water and you know let it sit there for a few minutes once it's set you know just go ahead and pour it out into the sink and then now the inside of the craft is already really hot once that happens go ahead and start your coffee and then it will even be that much better in retaining the hot temperature now if you want to make iced coffee like we're making right now you probably don't want to do that okay okay so again this is the stainless steel double wall vacuum insulated carafe. Okay, Brenda over here, we have on Facebook, I like the mesh filter. Yes, the mesh filter is actually really nice. It, it has this kind of a golden color to it. Actually, let me show you again, kind of the filter. Can you see if I move around? It kind of has this like brown goldish color to it, very coffee-like. So again, very nice. And it does, it, it, it kind of reminds me like a little basket, right? You could just pour it to the top and, you know, walk around with it if you want for some reason, right? Or not. Anyways, here uh, is the mesh filter basket. And then, <laughs> um, okay. Yes, just like you said, Brenda, uh, it is easier to clean with the mesh filter basket. It's just easy. Go ahead and put it over the sink and it'll finish. And then over here on uh, YouTube, we have Hachige83 saying laugh out loud. What is so funny, Hachige83? Do let me know. Okay, but either way, I, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so you heard the sound. How do we know when the coffee is finished? Well, we know because of the sound that it makes, it made three beeps, we know that it's finished. Now that it's finished, um, the way we make iced coffee is a little bit different. So let's go ahead, go to the close up once again. Now, actually it is safe to remove this because I don't recommend doing it, but for showing purposes right away, you can see that the water is all gone, right? Before we had four cups of coffee, now it is all gone. No more water right there. Where did the water go? Well, of course it went inside the carafe. Let's go ahead and move that. So now you can see that right here, what happened was that the water went down and it brewed the coffee it's in the carafe. The way we wanna make iced coffee now, um, we would open the lid and you can see the hot, coffee in there. I hope you can see it. I don't want to pour it out, but there you go. You can see a little bit, right? So that is hot. Again, this is double wall vacuum insulated. So the technology is reading, oh, hey, you know, the coffee brewed it in about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm, let me keep it hot. But let's say, let's say that we want to keep it cold, make it cold. What do we do? We just go ahead, put ice into the carafe, right? And now it's you know, thinking, hey, the ice is making the temperature change a little bit. What is this? Whoops, there we go. 
And um, for four cups of coffee, uh, you know, it is recommended to put a minimum of uh, 15 ice cubes. But of course, this is kind of a preference thing. So you could kind of just uh, gauge it, of course, and just put the ice that you, you would try it the first time. If you think it's too much, you can lessen it. If it's not enough, put more. And you know, the more you do this, you'll know what is the perfect amount of ice cubes for you. For me, I like my coffee, you know, very iced. So I'll go ahead and do this. Once that is set, we would want to go ahead and close the lid once again. I personally like to kind of just shake it to make sure that it is getting cold. And then that's it. We have iced coffee. Once again, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. If you want, you could just go ahead. Um, there is a thumb activation over here. Let's go to the close up once again, uh, right here. When you push down on it, it will actually pour the coffee. So I push down and it pours the coffee, right? Now let's say if for some reason I want a little bit more ice, I could just go ahead, put some ice before I put the coffee. You know, just a little bit, because I do like ice. Okay, and then pour the iced coffee in here, and then it just pours out. All right, so that is how we make iced coffee using the EC ESC120 and the EC YTC100. Again, different ways, but the coffee in the end does turn out to be really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's actually kind of compare them right here, right? So very nice. Um, I guess this wouldn't be a you know proper live stream without the taste, the tasting of it. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, so this is again the ECESC 120, and mmm, that is good. I really like it. Again, I, I for the. For the taste tuner, I went right down the middle, not too bold, not too light. Mm. That's good. And then over here, we didn't have a choice of the taste tuner. It just does a very nice brew. Ooh, that is smooth. I, I can't really like, I, it's hard to tell the difference, but they're both really good cups of coffee. Either or, whichever one you get, you're gonna get phenomenal coffee. Once again, buy one of these, get a free tumbler. I did talk about it. Here it is, the SXKA40CM. It does have this nice kind of uh, coffee latte color to it. Kind of this cinnamon beige. Um, very nice, once again. It is uh, 14 ounces, I believe. And again, you know, in celebration of coffee, why not, right? Okay, let's go to the close-up to kind of show you how it is made. So this is the coffee, very nice color. We have the Sojirushi elephant down here. Very simple, very clean. If you do want to, you know, put your coffee, pour it in, just twist off, and then here we go. Stainless steel, double wall, vacuum insulated. Pour in the coffee, go ahead and close it, and you can see that it's just a one piece, everything comes intact. Go ahead and close the lid. Next, there is a, you know, this latch where you kind of just close it, you open it if you want to drink, go ahead and open it. It's a two-step process, right? So one, two, and there here, you'll be able to, you know, pour it out and go ahead and take a sip of that beverage. If you want to close it, go like that. So once again, this is up just this week, started from the now all the way until October 1st. Once again, National uh, Coffee Day. You know, are you gonna be drinking a nice cup of coffee for the 29th of the 1st? Then why not get yourself a coffee maker while you're at it? Once again, buy one, get one for free. And where do you go? You go to uh, shop.sojirushi.com. Once again, the link will be down in, uh, you know, you just go ahead and click down and you'll be able to see the link. But if not, shop.sojirushi.com. 
once again, thank you so much for joining us here on this, you know, very, very, uh, you know, uh, National Coffee Day. I hope you enjoyed my, uh, you know, coffee demonstration. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take another sip. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us and I will see you next time. Thank you.